Hello, this is the Linux Gamer, and this chonky rocket you see here is my version of the Saturn C8 of the Nova rocket family, which I am now promptly going to launch. The reason it's such a big rocket that needs these eight, uh, these eight F1 engines to take off is because this was designed for a direct descent to moon mission, which would require a much bigger rocket because you need to carry all your heat shielding and landing stuff to the surface of the moon and then you'd have to carry most of your landing stuff back to earth with you. So it would need a much bigger rocket. In Kerbal Space Program it doesn't matter much because um, there aren't things like part failures and there's less loss due to gravity and you can always just add more boosters. But yeah. I guess I should probably also mention that uh, these aren't actually stock fuel tanks, they're the or, well, it's all stock parts, but these aren't fuel tanks that are part of the stock game, or indeed any mod. These are fairing pieces that are used to conceal standard Saturn V scale fuel tanks. So, there's that. <laughs> okay, I don't want to grab it to turn too quickly. Yeah, okay. Get that back on the prograde mark. And the first stage is already almost depleted. There it goes. Second stage powered by eight J2 engines. Tower now. Yeah, I'm, I've tried this mission several times, and all of them prior to this one, maybe this one too. We'll see. <laughs> I failed. So. Yeah, sorry for the lack of commentary. I'm just sick of doing this mission for like the ninth time or something. Anyway, I'm not actually going to completely burn all the fuel in this stage two. I'm going to uh, ditch it before I do my orbital insertion because I want to keep things somewhat realistic. Only blind ignition on the second stage, two on the third stage, so... As a matter of fact, the second stage has been burned to the desired completion and may now be ditched. Actually, considering the location of the moon, I'm just going to burn directly to the moon. I'm not even just going to do a parking orbit, I'm just going to burn straight for the moon. Not what they would have done in real life, but well, this never flow. flow flew in real life, so I guess I can take some creative license here or something. Again, another period where I don't actually have much to talk about. Oh dear. Um, yeah, I don't actually have anything to say. I didn't prepare any remarks or anything. I'm doing this commentary quote-unquote live. It's not like this is a live stream or anything. Like, I'm just doing it as in I'm just doing it as I do this. It's not post-commentary or anything. Anyway, slowly, slowly raising my apoapsis and periapsis. And now to just start burning towards the moon. Yeah. Or well not towards, but you know what I mean, I hope. <laughs> 
Anyway, I guess now is a good opportunity to, to yeah, good opportunity to talk about what I'm going to do next on the channel. So, um, after this one, I'm probably going to stop recreating historical and alt historical missions for a minute. Maybe make some SSTOs. Maybe do some non-KSP games. Who knows? But yeah, that's kind of the plan for what to do next. Uh, I do honestly like doing these alt history missions, but I also like doing, uh, say, Road to the Stars. Like, that's something I enjoyed doing until I accidentally deleted the save file, and that's kind of what I want to do next. I had a lot of fun making it, and I'm sure those of you who actually watched it probably liked it. I even got a few comments on it, which is your cue to comment on, like, and share this video. <laughs> Gosh, subscribe, do all those other things, I'm terrible. <laughs> okay, the burn's taking longer than I thought. Um, just speed up time a little more. Why'd the sound cut out there? I don't know. Anyway, I think we've got to our encounter now. Oh, not quite. Oh, we not on this orbit? Or do I need to go a little further? I'm gonna set the moon as target. Oh, even further. Okay, then. I'm just gonna smash this stage into the moon because why not? And then get this engine ready. Go away from the discarded stage a bit, and then get myself off a collision course. Don't normally go, like going into retrograde orbits, but I guess it's actually historically what was done with Apollo. So might as well just do it. And I'm actually now I remember gonna extend the antenna for a little bit of extra visual points. And I guess it's time to prepare for orbital insertion at the moon. That's the next big thing. As for power on this mission, I guess I'll bring up now. Oh, not maneuver. Up there. Uh, for power on this mission, it was accurate to the historical thing and brought fuel cells. I don't really need them. I have a ton of batteries, and the engine alternators will recharge them because I'm not going to use 6,000 electric charge between burns, let's face it. Okay, and begin orbital insertion. Poodle engine is pretty good for this task. I could probably have used a wolfhound engine on this stage too, but I was already using it on the stage above it, so felt a little weird to use it on this stage too. I mean, the wolfhound engine is overpowered in th terms of thrust, and so for that matter actually was the real Apollo service propulsion system because it was designed for initially for direct ascent, so it was way more powerful than it actually needed to be for the lunar orbit rendezvous plan that they ultimately went with. Anyway, just about got to a low lunar orbit, and then I'm going to actually time warp a bit so that I can land on the near side during day. Not sure why I want to land on the near side, probably just for realisticism. That and the fact that, I mean, if I for some reason need to communicate, I can, and you know what, I'm just going to land in these Midlands. Normally I'd aim for a crater, but it's not like this is career mode or something where I have to get science from a spe yeah, specific biome. So I'm fine landing anywhere, really. Looking at that slightly darker spot there, that looks like a good enough place to land to me. And 
extend the landing legs. Which work left into the tank. Sorry for people who are bothered by that. And begin slowing down, just not too quickly. Sorry again for being too quiet. Landings are always tense. Slowly, slowly in there. There we go. Now land in vertically, which is what I want, obviously. Oh, and bounced a little, but we have landed on the surface of the moon, and I actually brought a ladder for once for reasons, I guess. So, might as well extend those. I mean, I guess I said ladder, but there are multiple ladders making up this ladder. Ladder, McLadder, ladder. Lin Linoled or something? Linoled? Oh, whoops, you're supposed to use the ladder, right? You're the mission commander or something. No, ladder doesn't even work. Should probably have tested that. Actually, would you get stuck on the RC yet? Nope. Oh, and I forgot to extend that one, too. Well, okay, looks like you're jetpacking the rest of the way. And just plant a flag. I'm not going to stick around long. I'm not even going to get the other kerbals out. Not sure why I called the flag site that. I just need to call it some. Actually, I don't even need to call it something. You can leave a flag black blank. And now, prepare to ascend. Like I said, this thing has pretty ludicrous thrust to white ratio, both in KSP and the real life version had pretty good thrust. I wouldn't call it ludicrous, though. With my amount of delta V, though, I will probably have to employ the RCS thrusters to get me the rest of the way home, because I did not put a ton of fuel in this, it's just a few Oscar tanks and one uh, LV, no, FL T200 tank, so not exactly the, why am I still in physics warp? So, not exactly the most fueled, I guess, vessel ever. But with the RCS fuel, it'll be enough to get home. And just warp around to here. And I'm just burning, so my ejection angle is going to be along the moon's orbit retrograde, because that's how you do moon escapes for going back to Kerbin. And, yeah, as I said, I'm going to have to use RCS fuel to finish this, but as you can tell, I have plenty of that. It'll be slow, though, even with four times time warp. This probably wouldn't have happened if a direct descent Apollo mission ever had flown, but, you know, whatever. Again, failing to fill air, good job, me. I really need to come up with some interesting stories about space just to fill time, even if they're not directly relevant. Yeah. 
Look, I'm not Scott Manley. Don't have a great deal of obscure knowledge about space that would make a good story to tell while uh, making a video, and I don't really want to divulge personal information, so I'm not going to tell stories about my personal life while making a video. Anyway, there we go. We are home and free, more or less, provided I don't completely screw up landing or something. And just to play it safe, I'm going to use Warp 2 and make a quick save and everything because I don't want to screw up this mission again. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm going to be landing on the dark side, which generally happens when you're just departing immediately from the moon, having launched from the light side. Oh wait, no, I will land on the light side. Well, fancy that. There goes the service module. Panels fell off. I wish there was a way to disable staging on the... Oops, I wasn't free already. I wish there was a way to disable staging on the uh, service module, because sometimes I don't want the shroud popping off. That is to say always, because it just looks ugly when the shroud pops off. That's my reasoning. Looks like we probably won't get, be getting a splashdown if I had to guess we'll land in the desert. Which is cool and all, but not the most historically... Yeah, not the most historically accurate thing. Hey, maybe we'll land by the desert temple. Probably not, though. Not even 100% sure which mountain range the desert temple's in, so... I guess that's another reason I'm probably not going to hit it, because I'm not even deliberately trying at this point. Oh, maybe if it's this one I might actually get within viewing distance of the Desert Temple. Although I think it's the one to the east, though I could be wrong. Yeah, not seeing anything of interest here. I think the desert temples in the eastern desert mountain range place area locale. Trying to deploy parachutes at the last second just to make this thing a little faster. I mean, that's not last second, but safety first. And now to wait like 25 seconds to descend. Yay! So, I guess, even though I already told you, now is your cue to like, and subscribe, and share, and comment, and uh, watch my other videos, and uh, all those other things. No, I'm not an egomaniac, I promise, I just like sharing my stuff. <laughs> That's why it's called Linux Gamers Archives, because this is an archive of cool stuff I've done, and m maybe I do yearn after fame a little, but... I try to provide useful and entertaining content. Well, that was a weird note to end this video on. Speaking of which, it is indeed ended. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.